Williamson called him out of the play 12. Get back on side. We can hear him from up here in the commentary box. Now Auckland looking to take a quick cap. Will they take the two points? Tap the ball, keep the pressure on. Yeah, nice run there from Johnny Tongi to set that up, but also nice recognition from Jeremiah Pye to shift that ball. Well, Pye looked a little frustrated at the time that it was taking Leon Williamson to allow him to get on with it. He wanted to tap and go as uh, Auckland feed it up. Ball's been knocked down. And again, it's uh, Nathan Sherlock. He continues uh, his good run of form. Obviously, uh, through our games each week, we share with you Kupu Māori on what it might be the last of our six-week window of provincial rugby league. That is uh, no difference this week. As we get an another look, you can see Sione Tongia put some beef on over the past couple of years. He's still will only be 20 years of age, so a bright future ahead. Uh, Kore Doriki this week, and uh, Whanapahu, Whanapahu, excuse me, the bomb kick. Might see a few of them today, saw plenty of them last night. There he is again, Tongi up, that's the man we were talking about. Plenty strong, have a look at the, the solid sort of build to be running wide, don't you think? Oh, it certainly was. They gave him a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. We've seen him bust through a couple of tackles. Very smart play by the Auckland. The ball comes out the back of the scrum. Sione Tongia, big, strong and elusive. And he gets through the line to score the first try for the Auckland team. And as we see on the replay right here, the ball from the back of the scrum, bang, straight out to Tongia. One-on-one, -on -one, bang, on the outside. Casey Licker tries to come up with a tackle, but too big, too strong, Stace. Yeah, certainly too big, too strong. He was probably their best player when they played down in Canterbury a couple of weeks ago, and that close to the line, you do have to get off, off your line and try and defend him, but just a, a simple missed tackle there from Lekka. Well, you just want to have a look at the see how he comes in. He goes to Tongia. Lekka tries to go low on him there. Just bumps him off with those Malmaninga thighs. Yeah, exactly. He's got big thighs, not like not unlike our Manu Vatiwai. got a bit of a nose issue at the moment. Another star is born out of Panama Road, uh, Sione Tongia, flying uh, right in front of your face, Taylor. He, uh, this kid's got plenty, plenty going on. Oh, Sione Tongia, one of the most devastating players in the Sparta Cup Provincial Premiership. As you see, he didn't even do much. He just pretty much ran straight, and as if nobody was in front of him with those monster thighs of his, but powerful, fast, tough customer to stop with that close to the line. He's one of the leading try scorers throughout the season, but also some news uh, activity off the bench for Auckland there, why don't he? Yeah, Nathaniel Neal, number 16, has come on in place of ben, uh, Bo King. Uh, Nathaniel Neal is still young. Uh, I think he's only about 19. He played for the uh, Vodafone Warrior Toyota Cup side this year. He's a rugby convert. So, mate, he's, a, he's, a, he's a bright talent for these boys. You look, look for him to have a strong game. Tenakwe, thanks very much. Two of the best on the sideline with Tali Maipi and Wairangi Korpu. Well, speaking of the man, there he is, Sione Tongia from Panama Road, as you Dale, Dale said, but someone else who had the massive thighs from Panama Road, Big Joe Ropati. Big Joe. And look, here he is, big, strong. Casey Licker just bounces off him. Too big, too strong. His uh, powerful legs, it also has powerful buttocks. Is that right, Stacey? You got not as big buttocks, too, have you? Not as big as yours and uh, our man on the side, Montiari. <laughs> oh, cut it in, Jones. Cut it in. You're talking about Tony Kemp now. <laughs> Here comes Auckland. It's wind-up time. Good, strong kick return. Bamford there, down by four. 18 gone. Penalties two all at the moment. It's still very much anyone's game. If you've just joined in this Sunday afternoon, a warm welcome to Mount Smart. Number two is Tulsin Kidd. Stakes his claim, pushes through to 42. Plays it quickly, back to, to Kuroma. Hit time, spirited defence from Sherlock in particular. Johnny Limmer, the back row of for Canterbury, the Bulls, onto the left foot boot of Jeremiah Pye, who sends it deep and taken at the back by Aranga. Aranga away from one, but he can't escape the clutches of Politis Al Ali. And will play the ball. Come on, quickly. Hardened area, I guess you could call between the 30 and 20 meters here at the western end of the ground. Well, it has been outstanding form for the Bulls this year. Johnny Aranga in the um, five wins so far. Dale, one of the most consistent players for the Canterbury side, uh, brings the ball back very, very well, good on his feet, and always very, very solid in defense. So, Johnny Aranga being one of the standouts for the Canterbury Bulls this year. Bamford 
winds it up. Pulls us forward and he'll play it now on the 30 meter line. Then comes the replacement in Kane Ferris, no stranger to this level of comp. Yeah, Kane Ferris had a, had a couple of years at the Warriors and he had a big game last week too that set the platform for Canterbury's win. Winnetty, a little halfback. Shadowed and claimed 15 from the line. We're playing midway between the 20 and 10. 10 to the left hand side of the post as Arlinger comes from fullback and is the first receiver. Can he advance the football? He can through Alma Tungi, who again finds the second rower working the right side. And uh, Bam Bam will play it now. Eight from the line. Can the Bulls respond? They're down by four. First receiver is Alma Tungi. He turns it inside for Kane Ferris. Keeps it hot for Arlinger, who is close, but Arlinger can't get the ball down. Good play, Canterbury. Didn't come up with the points. Now, Sherlock gets it. Left foot. Not the greatest of kicks, but it still could be fortuitous for the Bulls. Left hand side, another grubber kick. Well, wow, there's more grubbers in the garden at the moment, and out they'll play. Five out from the line. Yeah, a bit of a disappointing end to that set for Canterbury, but look, there's some ominous signs that they are going to crack this Auckland defence. Yeah, good scrambling defence there by Auckland. The ball went through the back. Clear hands on the Canterbury side, and there he goes now, Williamson. Yeah, Brent Stewart will be uh, disappointed with that, that penalty here. They, ha they had Auckland under the pump there, and, and they've just let them off the hook right now. Well, there's not much of a gap between a gun and a goose, and uh, of course, you know, they could have been the guns here. They were trying to force back into the end goal. Ended up taking the second route. Auckland with the ball, 13 is on. Tries hard. Perfect conditions for play today. 30 from the line. Auckland up by four. First receiver on the far side is McDade. He too changes it on to Kent, who will play it now. Fed on by Ikaloma. Far side of the field. Trying to just find a little hole. Three runners there, but couldn't get the ball on the far side. And the dummy half goes Shoni Tongi. The course got some good footy still to come. The all gold oh, playing New Zealand oh, Maori. This is on oh, Sunday, the uh, 12th of October, down in Taranaki. Should be pretty neat. And the Kiwis line up against uh, Tonga as well. That's here at Mount Smart in a couple of weeks' time in preparation for the World Cup. As Jeremiah Pye decides to angle it towards touch, taken by Scott Hurrell, about 15 from his own line. Auckland defenders up quickly on him, including Lacini. And the Bulls play the ball. Just short of the 20, they're only into the ground. I just think uh, the kicking game of both teams, they've probably got to go to the air a bit more, put, put that pressure back on the other team, make it a 50-50 chance to get that ball back. What do you think, T? Yeah, no, good call there, Stacey, because as you've seen, the kicking, short kicking game hasn't been that good. Uh, some of them have been grubbers, some of them have been cross-field. Maybe put a few bombs up and have that opportunity to compete for it. We saw last night's game uh, where Jamie Lyons put a bomb up and Wade um, McKinnon uh, took the ball off and were able to score for Manny Orford underneath the post. So maybe competing and putting the ball up. Good call, Stacey. That's a good field uh, finder there and uh, Tally. Yeah, intentional tactic there, I guess, by Canterbury, just trying to slow down this game. And it'll be key to see how their energy levels are throughout. You have a look at the bench of the Auckland team. There are two guys in particular that Sam Panapo has opted for, and that's Tui Samoa and Peter Godine, who are dangerous attacking players. So it'll be key for Canterbury to keep their energy levels up and utilise their bench right, because come to the lighter stages of this game, which we've seen from Canterbury throughout the season, that's when Dwayne Wienert's in them usually kick in. Junior uh, Aranga uh, is in the later stages of the game against the tiring side. Well, it looks as though Auckland will adapt, adopt uh, those same type of tactics, and they are two of the best attacking weapons that you'll see in this competition. Kill it. I know both our sideline commentators will be somewhat disappointed Waikato aren't featuring in this uh, final today, but they can too hold their heads high. A young team, and uh, that'd be a good tournament. There's no need to open up old wounds there, Dale. Okay, fair enough. Here he goes again. Dubai, they call him, but Sione Tongi is his real name. And uh, young Dubai will play the ball. 42 from the line now, Auckland. Starting to mount a challenge now. Here's Jeremiah Pye deep and wide, cut out ball over the top and almost stolen from the hands of Willie Hitter, his opposite number, Winnity. Yeah, ball coming out there. I think it was uh, Jeremiah Pye threw the long floater out there to Willie Hitter. Dwayne Winnity was sweating on him and he probably just had a little peep out the corner of his eye. Have a look at the replay again, but Jeremiah Pye looking in pretty good shape. Here's the ball, comes out. Jeremiah looks good, long ball over the top, Winnity. 
Ooh, just oh. slipped my Willie hitter. From the back comes Arlong, a first receiver off the scrum base with another strong run, a spinning run. A couple of metres inside now, the Auckland half out of dummy half. The gutsy Limmer. Limmer plays it now, 42 in centre field. Sherlock, dummy half, looks for runners, finds Tootie. Big Ross Tootie. We play the ball now, 33 oh, out from the try line. The Bulls down by four, but certainly not down in spirit at all. They're starting to mount a serious challenge. Options left and right. Almatungi is their first receiver again. Bamford working that side. Lekker with the ball now, but Lekker bounces away from one. Sends it on the inside, and again, Lekker is guilty of perhaps trying to go one bridge too far. Pops the pass back on the inside. Ends up in Auckland's hands. Yeah, it certainly was. Once again, he's creating some space down that right-hand side for the Canterbury side, but just his options and passes, just maybe hanging on to it for one little, for a little bit longer. But well, Wayne, okay. this is an opportunity for Canterbury. They've done well to force their way on that set 40 metres. Good chance with the scrum feed on the 10 metre line. Yeah, that's right, Dale. I mean, we've seen it before. They put in a, a, a nice kick earlier just to put some pressure on Auckland side, and that's what's happened, mate. They've, they've put a good kick in, and uh, they've backed their kick, Jason. Now they've come up with a, with a good error. And now they're set. 10 from the line with a big opportunity. Oh. Scoreless at the moment. How long will that remain? As Limmer breaks from the scrum Stay base, peels Stay off. But the uh, blue and white are there in Stay numbers to hold his progress. Seven away from the line. First receiver now is the big number 16. The replacement who has come on and almost powers himself over the field. Oh. Kane Ferris. Oh. Strong run. Five to the right hand side of the post. Here's Canterbury as they get themselves set. Ardunga is first receiver. Winnetty, Winnetty. Turns back on the inside. Tulson Kidd stops him with his big melon. He'll play the ball now. Five from the line. Sherlock. Inside ball. Bam, bam, Bamford. Bamford to play it now. Still hot on attack with the Bulls. The Bulls working wide to Joe Smith. Now the ball is to ground and all can come up with it. Well, only themselves to blame, Canterbury. Yeah, they were patient there, but some fantastic defence from Auckland. Their try line defence has been outstanding today. They've saved a couple of certain tries, and in that set, that they were very strong. Yeah, good to see the Auckland side. As we see the replay goes out there, the inside ball from Matangi to Bamford. It's been well contained, hasn't been making those barnstorming raids he did last week. Ball comes out from Winnetty out to the replacement, the number 15 there, Joseph Smith. He gets to try to get the ball out the back door. But good online defence from the Auckland side, coming off their line, putting pressure on the Auckland side, but uh, on the Canterbury side rather. And uh, looks like Canterbury have the feed from the scrum. Is that right? Yeah, it was knocked down actually by Will Hetto. I thought it was uh, a, a misdirected pass. So Canterbury, the pressure oh, remains for them. Let me get time on. Wait, wait. Second Williamson go. asking Johnny, Johnny, for Johnny. both teams to just hold up. Auckland have made 114 tackles, their opponents 99. Aranga, once again, a familiar figure coming off the base of the scrum. Or first receiver, one right. Now it's Sherlock. Almatangi. Oh, Smoking run. Great defence. Casey Lecker to play the ball. Two from the line, diving from dummy half. Nathan Sherlock steals a march. And he's in to score 10 on the right-hand side of the post. Canterbury Bulls on the scoreboard. Yeah, there it is. Very simple. Out of dummy half. He's been very, very consistent for the Bulls this year. Nathan Sherlock looking for Mr. Holmes. But Sherlock takes the opportunity. Steals over from the, uh, from the base of a, a good run, first of all, by Casey Lecker. Jeez, I've been impressed with this young kid. Big, tall, rangy. Hit the hole at a bit of pace and got up with a quick play of the ball. Here he is. Plays the ball very, very quickly. Marker's big hole in the defensive line there. And look, easiest try he'll school. Yeah, it was very simple there. The A defender for Auckland was, was just asleep there. He just wasn't tying in and he should have been closer to that marker. But yeah, Sherlock's probably not going to get an easier try than that. He's been one of the players of the competition so far, though. Outstanding. And of course, uh, Tarahi, when you recall that he uh, stepped into fill the shoes of Shane Byers, who's been the Canterbury captain for, well, as long as anyone can remember. He's done a superb job um, as a stand-in for, uh, uh, for Shane, who's recovering, I think, from a broken wrist, if I recall. 
no question, Dale. Nathan Sherlock's really stepped in to fill that huge void. Shane Byers, who's been the captain, pretty much the heart and soul of this Canterbury Bulls team for a long time. Second most games in barter card and also most games definitely for the Canterbury Bulls. So he's stepped in. He's shown versatility in that role. He's also shown a dynamic uh, running game out of dummy half, which we just saw there. Fairly simple try, but again, on the back of some good work from his team. Auckland will be really disappointed in that. I guess if we take our cast our look eye back two weeks ago at their last uh, game, the weakest part of their game at the, that time was the communication on defence and also the defence on their line. All the tries that Canterbury scored were relatively fairly soft opportunist tries for this level, but they fixed that up so they will be disappointed and they will want, I guess, a little bit of utu uh, for that easy try to Sherlock. I guess Auckland have struggled to put the same team on the park. Um, you know, some clubs who preferred not to allow their players to become available, that's their decision. I'm sure there'll be discussions about it across the summer. But, uh, you know, Coach Sam Parnoff has struggled at times to keep uh, a consistent lineup. Well, I think this man here, the number 16, Kane Ferris, has made a bit of an impact since he's come on the field. He's really given them some momentum up front for the Canterbury side. And uh, with 61% territory advantage over... Uh, Auckland's 39%. Uh, they need to put a few more points on the board because I think uh, this win may be a four or six point advantage in the second half. Tenaku, good point too, Tawana. So a two point game at the moment, Tui Samoa. And as we know, Tui Samoa is one of the most explosive uh, league players in the local comps. Raymond Ului I think he's on now. Yeah, Auckland have made uh, 28 more tackles in than the Canterbury team. So it's. it's going to maybe be a telling factor towards the back end of this nine, first half. Nine, Again, Tarahi uh, Tui Samoa, we recall from the barter card competition of last year just how uh, devastating he can be, the top try scorer in the comp. And, uh, of course, had a little stint, didn't he, uh, across at North Queensland. Yeah, Tui Samoa was absolutely sensational, especially the first year that we started covering the Barter Card Cup. We scored 23 tries in just 18 games. But why? You're familiar with a lot of these guys in the Auckland team. Wade McDade has just come down for uh, a seat on the bench. But the main question I want to ask you is just about Jeremiah Pye, the man who's just kicked the ball. You've played a lot with him. Do you see him as a standoff? Uh, he's definitely got the skills as a standoff. You know, he's got a great, you know, got, got a great pass on him. He knows how to read. Uh, attack, uh, you know, read defense very well so, you know, to direct his attack. Um, you know, he, he has played a little bit of uh, a lock before, which is I don't mind him at the position because he's big, he's strong, and, and uh, you know, and he can ball, ball play. Uh, you know, he reminds me of a, a Bradley Clyde type player, but it's uh, you know, it's tough. He, he, he's in a good position there. So he, he's directing his, his team well at the moment. At the moment. One to watch as we count down towards the half time. The Bulls certainly keeping themselves in the game. They've been none better than Johnny Arlinger in jersey number one. He's had a uh, superb first half here in the final of the uh, Bartercard Provincial Premiership. Auckland down by two. And with the ball on the far side goes uh, Morty tick, uh, Ticking up. Again, strong defence. Kane Ferris responsible. 32 from the line. Auckland short side play. Ali. Instrumental skipper will need to involve himself a little more. He's a big man. He needs to get through a, a bit more work as, as Shirley Tongia bumps, turns, delivers. And the tackle eventually made by the skipper Lima. Just on the halfway now, Auckland. Big, strong, bullocking run there by the big Popo. Yeah, no, big run. That was Bo King there. Players had a bit of experience with the, the Warriors under 20s team. Tap back down, still five. Auckland need to get rid of it. And uh, a turnover for them, 30 up from the line. Yeah, well, once again, we see the last couple of kicks. Stacey, as you called, they've put a few bombs up. So 50-50 opportunities. Auckland unlucky not to come away with the ball from there. But we see Canterbury with the ball coming out from their own 30. Yeah, no, certainly uh, the right idea to put it in the air. But uh, just the execution has let them down in the last couple of kicks. And strong running on and up to the advantage line is Sherlock. Goes from dummy half, gets away from one slippery customer. Slithering along like a snake on its belly is Sherlock. Now he comes, plays the ball quickly out to Winnetty. Winnetty to Omatangi. Busters the buster line is Ferris. Back it comes to, to the number seven. Turns it back to his at Limmer. Kahore, they'll play the ball anyway. The Bulls, 14 with it is Walker, Tama Walker. Keeps the ball hot on the far side, but too close to the line, and the Bulls bundled into touch. Well, that run is castrated. They, they went just, the wrong way there. 
Yeah, they, they did. They left. should have come to the left-hand side, stays definitely. The option, there was only two players outside of this side of the post, and they went to the right-hand side of the play. Good run there, Carl Ferris. And I think it's Arang, is it? He gets tackled there. Very, very unlucky. Yeah, certainly, uh, T, you picked that up on it before. Since Kane Ferris has been on the field, he's created a lot of problems for the Auckland Auckland team. He's a big man, isn't he, Stacey? He, uh, he likes to run holes, and that's what you like to see. He does. He runs really good lines, and he's also got a very good offload, so he's going to cause some trouble today for Auckland. Well, that's where you want to see the number one, Aranga, sorry, um, hanging around the lights of Ferris like we did there. Winnity, once a big fella gets through the line, you want to take that opportunity because you don't get too many. We've seen Canterbury go three times, busted the Auckland line, but they really haven't finished. Jeremiah Pye. He's an imposing figure with ball in hand. Penalty coming the way of Auckland. The old chicken wing. Why don't you, uh, oh, you mate, what do you have to bring that up for? Grapples, chicken wings? You know a lot about well, it's nearly half wings. time and you two are thinking of lunch, probably. I've eaten a few chicken wings. Why don't you, the style of play from this Ardanger at the back for the Bulls, he seems to involve himself in anything, running close to their scrum, uh, dummy half work as well. Yeah, he's built a lot of confidence, I suppose, off the hard work of his forwards. You know, like, the, like you said, boys, Kane Ferris coming onto the park and, and doing a good job of him. I think, uh, like, I, I think you're right, he needs to sniff around Kane and his big forwards a little bit more because Kane has got a very good offload and, and you know, that, that could spell some tries. It's Auckland close to the line. They've had precious few opportunities in the last 15 minutes, but they are close and they'll cause problems through Godine. Now, the tackle is made by the num number seven, Winnetty, but Auckland... Well positioned, first receiver is Willie Hitter. Beautiful spiral pass, cut out ball over the top to Sione Tongia. Once again, Big Sione is in. And again, it's like deja vu for the big centre. Pushes off a defender and is in to score a couple of from touch on the far side of the field. Great effort from Tongia. Yeah, certainly is. There's a the go-to man, Sione Tongia. He's a man and they got the ball to him. And uh, one-on-one, -on -one, he's just too hard to stop. And it's always a scary situation when you're out there, if you're marked up against the big unit. And as we see, some good balls, good, good long ball there. Again, from Willie Head out to Jeremiah Pye. Cuts out two plays. Bang, comes off the left foot. Jeez, just too big and too strong. Yeah, no, some very good play there from Auckland. Some good hands there, getting the ball out wide nice and early. And, and that's what I'll be saying to my team if I send Punap at half time is get the ball to this guy because he's going to cause some havoc all day. And, and uh, Tama Walker there sort of didn't have too much chance here. I know what it's like being a small guy trying to defend up against big guys like that. Yeah, I ran over you a few times, Stacey, out there. Hey, remember when you were hiding on the wing? Yeah, well, you were about the size of uh, Tonga back then, too. <laughs> Scary. I used to jump on and try and pull your hair when you had the mullet. I guess, Tana, he, uh, you know, that was confident play by both Hitta and Jeremiah Pai. Two good passes. Uh, Siongle just finished off. Well, it helps when you know that you can utilise massive attacking weapons on uh, the left-hand side, side of the field. Look, you put Tongye and you put Pala Tisale Ale too. Two probably biggest guys in the Auckland team. It's a dangerous, dangerous prospect for any side. Like, they've got Chris Bamford, Kyle Eka, who's usually a very good defender, so... They need to uh, do some adjustments on defence, whether they play a more up and in or whether they commit more than one defender to try and stopping him. Because every time they come to this 20 metres, just like Stacey said, Sam is just going to tell them, give the ball to the number four, and he'll usually come up with a four-pointer. There he is, former Kiwi teammate, Sammy Panapa. Actually, funny story about Sammy. We were playing in the Kiwis against the Australians, and uh, he lost his contact lenses one day, and that's why he dropped the ball. That's what his excuse was anyway. He dropped about four or five times, and he was... And he's looking down on the ground, trying to find something in the mud. Uh, you've got a story about every rugby league player who ever strapped on a boot, though, uh, Tawin. But you know, the good point you made there, Tawin, as we see the ball comes up. What they need to do is they need to stop this man. The defence needs to be right up in his face or right on him. So those wingers need to just push right up and so go for the intercept or put some pressure so he knows that you're going to be right on top of him, Stacey. Yeah, would you try and look at probably putting someone bigger out there, maybe Bamford to mark up on him, or would you just keep things the way they are? No, you, you just want to make sure that guys are confident in their defensive ability and if they can try and get a shot on him, like come from his outside so he can't see you. Two and a half minutes to play here in the first half as Thompson Caird is halted. And there'll be a penalty uh, that ensues as a result of that tackle yeah Chris Bamford has been given a spell on the uh, the bench Kane Ferris is the man responsible for the tackle again we see Tulson Caird well that didn't miss did it yeah Kane Ferris I mentioned he had a bit of time at the Warriors and looks like he's uh why don't you who's uh, been giving him some tackling practice 
Well, we could call it the car or coat hanger, but now that the old park's gone, we'll have to rename it the, the Canterbury coat hanger. Actually, have you considered getting yourself a, uh, a unit in the Carlaw Park the retirement home, Tarwina? Well, that'll be a good place to go to, mate. At the moment, you know, with investment prices, you could probably get them out of steel, wouldn't you? Well, Shouldn't be, nice be too far away. Only a couple more years and you'll be there, T. Be a good address for later in life, no doubt about it. Yeah, I'm going to start investing in that for oh. you too, Stacey. You know, oh. you can join me. You can push me around oh. in my wheelchair. Oh. Carlow Park Retirement Village. That's what's happened with the the uh, grand old lady. Her one, and, um, oh. I'm thinking about it myself, to be honest. Dawson Caird. Yeah, we're just approaching half time. Uh, Tom, what would you be saying if you were Brent Stewart going into half time? Yeah, no, they've had a few opportunities in the first half, territory wise and uh, possession wise. But, uh, you know, if I was Brent Stewart, I'd be just telling my boys keep hanging in there, just keep doing what we're doing. Try and uh, maybe get a few of our little blokes in around the middle of the ruck and try and get these uh, Auckland forwards on the back foot. Well, Tony, it's just as we come into half time, it's what the fans, here we go though, Auckland still. Uh, uh, searching for an opportunity through Tui Samoa. He'll play the ball 10 out from the line. But at 8-6, both teams leaving themselves very much in the hunt for the uh, Premiership title. This is the man who's caused them problems, Sione Tongia. Look how strong he is. He's got two, three on him, and he's still having to go towards the line. But, uh, you know, both coaches, I guess, at halftime, Tyler, he will be able to say, hey, you've, uh, you've left yourself room, you're hanging in there. We're in for a, a dazzling 40 minutes in the second half. Yeah, I don't think either coach would be too disappointed or even on the other side too pleased about what's going on. It is a tight contest. There's been, I guess, a few uh, errors uh, in this first half, but a bit of a tentative start uh, for both teams. But I think if anybody would be feeling a little bit more comfortable, it might be due to the recent form of Canterbury. Remember, they sl started slow against Auckland. Te Auckland had 10 nil up on them. They started slow against Waikato also. They had 18-10 at half time, and they came home, scored 32 points in the second half. There's the hole you were talking about out of here. Great finish as well by Iluiane. Superb run by the Bulls. Here's Sherlock. He's been one of their best. Still hole running. Goes the big 17. Kyle Lecker. 32 away from the line. 20 in from the northern touchline. First receiver is Alma Tangi. Decides to banana it across, but that'll beat everyone. And it finds touch and goal. We start on the 20. And that is 40 minutes of a footy. A very entertaining first half here in the final. Broadcast live on Māori Television, the home of New Zealand Rugby League. It is the Bali Card Provincial Championship. And at half time, Auckland lead Canterbury 8-6 at Mount Smart.